Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Today we are celebrating the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join us in singing our entrance hymn, Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sinning mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have already said in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my sincere fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel for free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The Word of the Lord.
my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to share with you this. Every time I read this gospel, I remember Father Thomas Huang. Do you remember him? Yes. He told us a joke that the reason, the reason that St. Peter denied Jesus three times because Jesus cured his mother-in-law. <laughs> so that is just a joke. Right? Anyway, anyway, as you know, more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus came and performed a great miracle. And today, Jesus continues to perform many, many great miracles for people. But the way he performs the miracle is different. Namely, he invites us to work with him. So let's say when you share something to someone, that means you fulfill their need. And then when you fulfill their need, that means miracle happens in that person's life. So every year on the first Sunday of February, Cornino Ninago launches DSF program, namely Dyson Service Fund. So today, I would like to show you the video that Cardinal made and ask us to do something to help many different ministries out there. We have, in this archdiocese, we have 60 different ministries and there are many poor people out there. They are waiting for this fund to help. So please um, watch this video and listen to your body and please uh, contribute whatever you can. I know during this time, it is difficult for everyone, everyone. However, it depends on your finance. If you could help, please help because many people out there are waiting for this fund. Please watch. Thank you. Many people in these recent months, many of you, have suffered. Perhaps you've been affected by COVID-19 or a loved one. Many people have lost their jobs, and with that come all kinds of tensions. Yes, if there was ever a time of distress and darkness, that no more beautiful a theme exists than to say, look ahead. Walk in the light of Christ. Christ is our comfort, and indeed, he's our hope. In that experience of hope, DSF, 60 plus ministries. Well, what happens to them during COVID-19 time? Can I give you a couple of examples of some of our ministries and how they function and operate at this time? Take for example, our Catholic school's office. Friends, I can't tell you how innovative and talented our school's office has been in working with our school principals, our Catholic school teachers, in finding ways for them to teach virtually even while they're teaching person to person. That requires real skill. And although there are skills in education, which I consider to be very important and we're second to none, we are weaving themes of faith and our Catholic tradition in our school life. For indeed, the reason for a Catholic school education is to thread faith and life together I will say that this year has been especially challenging for our schools as we have managed educating our students amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, which has brought us many opportunities to adapt to a constantly changing educational environment. We have also been challenged to provide additional tuition assistance and technology support to families whose circumstances were impacted by the coronavirus. Our pastors, principals, and school staff have been incredible. They are warriors out there and I thank them for their selfless service to our schools. I take my role as a teacher and an administrator in the Catholic schools very seriously. It's a vocation for me to be a part of Catholic education. COVID-19 has 
brought upon uh, challenges to all schools and how we can best support the needs of our students during this time. The Catholic Schools Office has been very focused in helping devise a plan for schools um, in which they can reopen in a safe health environment under these conditions. I, for this last year, have been the art teacher here, and I have been able to hold my classes using Zoom technology and can say how very effective it has been. Catholic schools are a valuable asset to our society. What makes them different than public schools is that we can address and instill the gospel values into our students. God will not ask me, how well did I teach? But he's gonna ask me, how many souls did you bring to me? How many lives did you help transform using my message and bringing my will, the kingdom of God, into the world? In all our work in DSF, a really important office is our Office of Adolescent Catechesis and Evangelization. That particular office works with, well, our young people, those teenagers uh, who are so important for the faith. And so we have a youth office that's very intent, even in these pandemic times, to meet with young people. They're the future of our faith, and so we need to care for them and to shine the light of Christ on their expectant hearts and minds. When we look at what's happening with adolescents today, many of them become disaffiliated by the time they're 15, 16, 17 years old. And so the key mission of our office and one of the real reasons we exist is so that we can assist young people, we can assist parishes to help provide the discipleship experiences, the encounters with Christ that are necessary to become a lifelong disciple. I grew up with my grandfather. My parents were there and he was by their side. I think it was around first grade or kindergarten. I heard something about him having cancer. He just got sick. He passed away. And that was when my faith was truly tested. I was lucky enough to be raised on a Catholic education. And I found that answer through my faith. I always have something to go back to now. I have the Catholic Church and that is my foundation. The primary method to engage young people in their faith is through working with uh, the youth ministry leaders in the parishes, training them, resourcing them, mentoring them. The second is to work with the Archdiocese and Youth Council. The role of the Archdiocese and Youth Council is to serve the Archdiocese at large. We meet together roughly three times a year. Our job is to help the adults have a direct lens into the youth. We are our boots on the ground with young people. This year, because of COVID, again, it was a matter of where are young people in the midst of this? We gathered, of course, online, all of our youth council and said, what are you experiencing? What's happening in your life right now? And so they provided us all kinds of responses, which then we sent forth to all the parishes and said, here's what we're hearing from young people. The COVID-19 pandemic is something that's really different in the sense that we're all disconnected. The benefits of having a strong faith is, you know there's someone out there for you. Having that, that mentality has truly helped me to weather the storm, no matter how long it's gonna last. One of the offices we are highlighting this year is the Office of Vocations. Becoming a priest is not short term. Many of our young people, from the time they enter the seminary until the time they are ordained, may spend nine or 10 years in seminary and in formation. The maturing in your vocational call to priesthood is what the Office of Vocations does. And it's an expert at that. The Office of Vocations really works with the future of the church. We're accompanying young people who are just grasping their relationship and identity in Jesus, that they're somehow sons and daughters of the Heavenly Father. And we're, we're trying to help them to the next step. What are they called to do? What is their mission? And it's, it's those deep questions that I think I'm hearing young people beginning to ponder that are really gonna drive them deeper into the church's mission of discerning their vocation, of finding their purpose in a new way through God. But we really wanna find the right the right men, the ones God has called. And then not just that, we want to make sure they're ready, that no one makes it to ordination without 
climbing that mountain of transformation by giving them the tools that they need and then really kind of accompanying them and really trying to sift through spiritual experiences or prayer that, yeah, the Lord is calling me. This is where I need to be. Like, that's where we work best, trying to help men say, let me just live for the church. And it's a beautiful thing that we get to be there at the early stages to help them find that mission and then begin to live it. The DSF every year is the way the archdiocese, the way our local church helps to sustain 60 or more programs that operate throughout the archdiocese during the year. I am grateful to everyone who contributes to that, even by prayer. Some of you this year who may have given in the past, quite frankly, can't give much this year. I understand that. Some of you who may actually have done a little better this year, I ask you, perhaps modestly, you might give a little more. And if you can give that little bit of help for the first time, I am deeply grateful. In these days of COVID-19, we have been tested. God has constantly brought the light of his son Christ into view. Grateful to Jesus, beautiful light in our midst, and grateful to all of you. Thank you. Please rise. Thank you for watching. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but a stranger with the Father. Through him all things will be. For us men for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was born the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our second crucified and crucified, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the light of the world to come. Amen. The Lord hears the prayers of all who call upon the name of God. In faith, let us offer our needs to our loving God. For those who serve the people of God, that they might faithfully proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, by what they say and do, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, we have our prayers. For the innocent victims of violence, war, and injustice, that they may find relief from their afflictions through the hands of fair and just rulers, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, we have our prayers. For this faith community, that our lives may resonate the goodness and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we have our prayers. For the sick and the brokenhearted, that the presence of the divine healer may bring comfort and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we have our prayers. For those discerning their vocation in life, that they may enter God's call to serve Him in a religious vocation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we have our prayers. For all those who have died, that they may rest in the peace of God's eternal kingdom, especially Carol Ann LeBlanc, wife of Charles LeBlanc. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we have our prayers. 
This Mass is offered for the intention of Judy Mendez. For this intention and for those we hold in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, these are our beginnings. Please grant us. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Yeah. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fact of all holiness. Make holy. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become fathers, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave it thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim your temple, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give it thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Dinamo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have an asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Divine teaching, 
we get to stay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass again. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant us in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to the Messiah, please.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyful bear for the salvation of the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for announcement. This Sunday, tomorrow, is Rosary Sunday for Sacred Heart. All parishioners are asked to pray the Rosary any time during the day for the intentions of each family. Please check the bulletin, website, Facebook, or our app for more information. The family that prays together stays together. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, before sending out, let us give a big hand for our cantor and musician. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Andy. Big hand for our uncle Lyons, Kevin O'Brien, Berkshire, Lester, Edam, Abigail. And thank you for coming. Thank you so much. And big hand for our brothers and sisters in the chapel. Big hand. Thank you. Please rise. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in saying the St. Michael Prayer. St. Thank you. 